In this video, we're going to see an example of using the optimization toolbox to solve a path planning problem. Consider the following. We're in an aircraft with some fixed airspeed, and we want to go from our starting point here to our destination over here. And we'd like to find a path that takes us there in the least amount of time as possible, where time is defined as the distance traveled over that path divided by the average speed over that path. Now, you can see I also have a vector field displayed here. This vector field represents the local wind conditions at every point basically the magnitude and bo both the uh, direction and the magnitude of the wind at every point. Now if you've ever done a lot of flying you know that whether you're flying into the wind or with the wind at your back this can make a big difference as far as how long it takes to reach your destination. We want to avoid headwinds and use tailwinds whenever possible. Well one possible uh, path from start to finish is to just go in a straight line. This clearly minimizes the distance but it might not necessarily minimize the time. There's actually an infinite number of ways to go from start to finish, and some of these paths are going to be better, and some of them are going to be worse than others. So the question then is, how do we find the best path from start to finish? Let's solve this as an optimization problem in MATLAB. So let me load up a script that we're going to use. And if you want to see the real fine details of everything that I've coded up here, these files are on MATLAB Central, so you can download them and look at them if you'd like. Uh, but I'm just going to run through it quickly uh, using cell mode here. The first thing we're going to do is just set some parameters such as the airspeed and uh, I'm going to generate a random vector field for the purposes of this demo uh, and set the size of that vector field and then show it using the quiver command. So this is the vector field that we're going to work with. Let me put it here so we can kind of take a look at it. And you can see the uh, arrows representing the direction and the magnitude of the wind at every point. In addition to this vector field, I'm also going to superimpose uh, some color to show the actual uh, tailwind or headwind contribution at each, of the, at each of these points. So for example, these green areas represent areas where the uh, general direction of the, of the wind is in the direction of the destination, whereas the red areas are areas that we'd like to avoid because these are areas that are kind of pointing, us ag are pointing against the way we would like to travel. All right, so the next thing I want to do is define a path that takes me from this starting point to this uh, destination over here. And the way I'm going to do it is by setting a number of waypoints that take me along this path. So if I just have some waypoints here, then I'm going to make a continuous path that goes through each of these points and takes me to my destination. So because my waypoints were all in a straight line, when I connected them, uh, of course, I also get a straight line. So this this uh, combination of waypoints here represents the straight line solution, basically just flying a straight line to the destination. Now let's see how long it takes if we were to fly along this path to uh, the uh, final point here. The way we calculate the time is basically we have to do a line integral where we break this path up into a number of small little sub, sub intervals. And I don't want to get too into the mathematics of it, but if we just, for example, you know, break it up into sub, sub, sub intervals like this, for example, over each of these little sum intervals, the wind is more or less constant. So I know, okay, well, if I'm traveling in this direction, then, well, I can see that in this uh, case, the wind is opposing me kind of in this direction with this contribution. So then I can find my uh, average velocity over this segment, and then I can calculate the time it takes to travel this segment. And then by summing up all the little times over each uh, sub interval, then I can find the total time over the entire uh, line. Uh, of travel. So all this uh, calculus that's uh, being done to calculate the distance is actually done inside this sub-function called get time from path. Let me open it up and you can see the actual calculation is done in the last four lines where I do actually do the dot products and the uh, summations that are necessary to get the time. So if I run it for this particular path I get a straight line travel time of 10 hours and 58 minutes or yeah about 10 hours and 59 minutes. Well I can choose different waypoints and by adjusting the location of these waypoints I'm going to get a different path and of course each path has its own unique travel time. So you can see here by changing the uh, waypoints um, just randomly I'm, I'm probably not going to do too much better than going in a straight line. Well instead of just randomly choosing waypoints I'm going to use fmincon from the optimization toolbox and I'm going to pass in the get time from path function as the objective function to that optimization solver. And we can have fmincon 
fmincon here, automatically calculate the best waypoints such that the time from start to finish is minimized. So it just finished in the matter of a few seconds and it gave me these 10 coordinates where the first two represent the x and y coordinates of my first point, the second two represent the coordinates of my second point, and so on for all five waypoints. So let's actually plot this optimal solution and see what it looks like. So here we have this sort of S-shaped curve that kind of cuts across this red area and dips into this green area here. And the optimal travel time was 10 hours and 17 minutes. Let's go back and see how that compared to the default set of waypoints, which was just a straight line. So the straight line travel time gave me 10 hours and 58 minutes. So by using MATLAB and the optimization toolbox to, to automatically generate waypoints, I was able to cut 41 minutes off the travel time from uh, my starting point to my destination. Okay, so at this point we've answered the question that we originally set out to answer and you know maybe we could go on to do some more advanced analyses. For example, you can imagine that wind is shown as a vector field here but it, it's not constant. It depends on time. So maybe I might want to write a script that takes into account the time dependence of wind and I'll write a, a, a for loop. So for each time step I'm going to calculate the optimal solution and when I do that, I can see that although this might have been the optimal solution to begin with, once I start get, getting moving and the wind changes, the optimal solution also changes at each time step. So this is one thing that I could possibly do. Or another way I could maybe extend this analysis would be to, you know, instead of writing a bunch of MATLAB scripts to do this, I could do this uh, by making a MATLAB GUI that will allow me to, you know, maybe move these points around more interactively, uh, see how the the uh, time changes as I move the points around with my mouse. I can change parameters such as the type of interpolation I do, uh, the number of waypoints that I'm using, the airspeed of my aircraft. And then uh, even after I you know, move these points around manually, I can still call the optimization solver to find the optimal solution. So I hope you can see that you know, MATLAB gives you the flexibility to try out a lot of different things and the power to be very creative in the types of analysis that you do. This concludes this video demo. Thank you.